Hello, welcome to another episode of My Life in Objects. So a two for one in this episode, and I'll explain in a moment how the two items are actually linked, although primarily it's about this. Now, the other thing I will say, and um, it's intention, the intention with all of these episodes actually, where I'm featuring a piece of technical equipment, or what's the best word, a piece of um, electronic equipment, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the specifications, that's not really the point of the series. Um, it's more about the stories surrounding this and various connections. And uh, I'm pleased I, I found this um, because it, yeah, in in interesting couple of stories I think anyway. So I bought this sometime in 2007 in 2007 into 2008 so for me and I don't know at what point they started using the term so I might be applying this retrospectively but this was my first netbook and I remember being intrigued with these when they came out they were pretty cheap at the time and this is an Asus EPC I flip it over, it does actually say here, it's actually got 4 gig of what would be flash storage on here. Although not, as far as I know, it's not like the modern form you get in the newer flash drives. And um, yeah, there we have it. <laughs> There's the keyboard. You've got a pretty simple mouse. I'm not sure what sort of Intel chip was inside here, pretty basic. Uh, let me just flip this around. And uh, yep, yeah, there is indeed a camera on there. I did actually fire this up. The battery doesn't hold a charge, but um, yeah, if I plug it into the mains, it fires up. This originally shipped with some sort of flavour of Linux, and I can't remember. Um, which particular what, what it was at the time um, but I do remember one of the things I did straight away because I bought it for a number of different reasons um, I already had probably at least one laptop but I was just really curious about the technology and you know back then even small laptops were relatively heavy and anything you wanted really small that was powerful was pretty expensive so it was interesting when this came on the market and as i said it shipped with linux i wanted to try and install windows on it and so at the time um, i'm trying to think probably would have been windows xp could be wrong there anyway um, I, I put this real like slim down install of it on there by disabling various features and not having a whole load of extra stuff um, just because I wanted to try and yes it, it was able to run with Windows and uh, of course in order to do that I had to attach an external CD uh, CD-ROM drive to this and do the installation for that. Interestingly enough, it does have an SD port, so you can do some clever shenanigans with different operating systems if you really want to do that. It's USB 2.0. Obviously, one thing I could have done at the time is created like um, a USB boot disk as well um, and done it that way. So there's a number of different things. I think at that time the problem was that um, you know USBs was still relatively expensive and I think I had a couple of 2 gig SD chips which I used to use with this for various things but that wouldn't have fitted Windows on it and yeah so it was quite fun to to try that out and get it up and running I mentioned that it shipped with Linux as, as the system it also came with I think OpenOffice pre-installed on it so the funny thing is of course by the time I got Windows onto this with a 4 gig drive there wasn't much space for anything else 
and primarily it, as a consequence it ended up as a pretty much 100% netbook in that you know everything that I used on it was from the web on the internet so uh, yeah it was uh, um, it was interesting in you know what it ended up being used and it was it was nice to have a super light super light laptop now where it really fits into an interesting part in my life is that I used it I traveled with this when I first came out to Nova Scotia um, the first time I, I I visited ultimately um, the person that became my wife um, and the first time I came out here I I took this with me because I didn't want to be lug lugging my regular laptop with me and uh, it was pretty cool at the time uh, Deezer had come out so there were the sort of early streaming services so there was Deezer which I believe came out about 2007 so I was really using that Spotify hadn't properly released it was available for uh, it was invite access in I think October of 2008 and I came over to Nova Scotia the time, first time in, in June of 2008 so I came over before Spotify was a thing but ultimately I did also access Spotify on this um, when it did become available because I was an early adopter of, of Spotify and um, someone sent me an invite link so that was cool but uh, yeah, it was interesting traveling with this. And um, when I got over here in 2008, the, the speaker, as you, speakers on here aren't great. And so this is where this second item comes in. So when I came over here, I went into probably Best Buy or whoever was around at that time and, and bought the, these, which are these fantastic USB speakers, they're phantom power. I don't, I don't know what model number this is. Um, they came in this nice case. And these were great for traveling. They fold up nicely into this case. And so you just plug them in through the USB connector. It's just a single USB connector. You just plug them straight in and everything occurs through that. They get power from it. Um, they Obviously the audio goes across in it. So you just um, send the audio to the speakers through USB. It just registers up as a regular audio device. And so this really paired up nicely. So on here, I was basically streaming Deezer. Um, also, what else? Uh, using it to access internet radio. And um, there was one other thing I did think of. Oh yeah, because I had the SD chips, I, I think I'd moved some music onto those. And I don't know if anybody remembers um, at the time, you could buy little those little um, mini music state, um, what would you call them, like a um, sound system. They normally had a CD player in and a radio. And quite a lot of them came with a dock on the top for a, like a um, music device, music player. But also a lot of them came with an SD reader, interestingly enough. And um, yeah, there was one in the, the house at the time here when I first visited. And um, yeah, so I was able to take that as well and plug it into that and listen to music. So I had a few of my sort of favourite albums on there in MP3 format. Um, but the... So... so Primarily this was being used when I was traveling uh, and, and like I say, great for playing music, accessing the internet if you needed to, but with Windows on here, couldn't do much beyond that, like certainly couldn't put Office on here. But what was interesting is it, it did uh, be, become quite a saviour. Uh, about a year later, when, uh, when we got married, I came over for, I think month and a half to Canada. Um, I did ultimately go back because um, we decided to process the 
my immigration. I came over as a spousal sponsor, I think it was called at the time. I think it's referred to as something else now. Um, under the family sponsorship program. And uh, I was coming backwards and forwards quite a bit between um, Nova Scotia and the UK. And like I said, on, on one particular trip, it was um, I stayed for two and a half months, during which time we got we got married over here. And when I was booking the trip originally, uh, my wife had said, "Oh, you want to come out with a, on a business trip with me to DC?" She was speaking at a library conference, so I said, "Yeah, great, that would be cool." So we, so I. You know, came out. That's why I came over for such a long time, because uh, we weren't. The wedding wasn't until June, and I came over in May, and it was good because I was finishing up a course with the Open University as well at the time, so I was able to to do that. And um, what was interesting is um, in the toing and froing, I did already have some equipment over here already I think I had a, a slightly bigger laptop over already but when we were going to travel to DC I wanted to travel light so I wasn't going to take anything with me originally and uh, I decided to take this anyway we got to the airport to um, check in at the desk and I hadn't um, I hadn't bought the tickets originally so when we checked in, it turned out because I was from the UK, although I didn't need a visa, um, it was the early days of what they calling it pre-clearance. Now, fortunately, you didn't have to do it 72 hours before it could be done the same day. Um, but had I have not had this with me, it would have meant trying to go off and find a, a PC somewhere in the building, somewhere at um, Halifax Airport to to just apply for that uh, pre-clearance but fortunately I had this with me so I was able to sit down uh, literally in the area where the the check-in desk was and um, process my pre-clearance using this just by logging onto the website so that was so this this saved me a lot of uh, hassle at the airport so yeah it was was well worth it just for for that alone actually um, and then really I, I carried on using it for, you know, any travelling I was doing for, for probably a couple of years after that, where I just we just wanted something to be able to access the internet. Um, I don't use it much now, and I, as I might have mentioned, I did fire it up earlier, I think yesterday, and it, it does still fire up, although it doesn't have Windows on here anymore. It's got a another flavour of Linux, um, but funnily enough... Um, I put that on there quite a while ago and uh, just because I wanted to make sure I could install one of the newer distros on there, the, one of the slimmed down ones and of course subsequently I forgot what password I set. There's nothing important on here so at some point I'm going to get around to wiping it but it's pretty cool that it, it'll still uh, still fire up. So hopefully you've enjoyed that little trip down memory lane. And uh, yeah, this is a cool combination of things, the, the ASUS with the Logitech speakers. Thanks once again for watching. Bye for now. And I'll catch you in the next video.